written quotation. In this movie, we're going to take a look at the written quotation that's automatically generated for us by the program. We can generate the written quotation at any point during the estimation process. But to ensure that we're providing the client with all the information they will need, it will be best practice to rewrite and print the quote after we have generated and checked the details in the other reports. For example, the summary, the work and payment schedules, the retention, and so on. To open the written quote, we click the Reports tab and click the Quote button. If we're accessing this for the first time, or if we've made any changes in the setup of the quote or any other area of the programme that the written quote draws information from, we will get this message. This message is telling us that the programme has noticed that changes have been made that will affect the current content of our quote, and asking us if we want to rewrite it. We'll click Yes. The NHE Plus is now going through all of the information and automatically creating a written quotation that's based on the information that we've put in. This is a very complex process and will take a few minutes. This form lets us know what the programme's doing. It also offers hints and tips for getting the most out of this automated function, such as checking the grammar. And finally, it reminds us that whilst it will take a few moments, this is a fraction of the time it would take if we were doing it manually. To ensure this process is smooth, we're unable to navigate elsewhere in the programme whilst the written quote is being generated. When the quote has been written, this form will close. OK, the client's name is brought in here. If we entered the address details, these will also be brought through for us. Today's date is put here. The programme is preloaded with a cover letter. We can change the standard paragraphs for this if we wish. We'll look at how this can be done shortly. We'll notice here that by default, it does say, Your sincerely, Easy Price Pro. This is something that we will want to change. And again, we can see how a little bit later on in this movie. The written quotation is laid out in the same logical order as the pricing sheet. So it starts with the information about the site setup, foundation, ground floor walls, and so on. It's useful to note that as well as stating what is included, where applicable, the quote also states what isn't. For example, if we go back to the foundations, we can see here that the dimensions, including the depth of the foundation, that is being allowed for, is stated. Due to the nature of foundations, there is also further client-friendly information letting them know that building control will inspect the foundations and that they may require changes to the depth. It clearly states that if such a change is required, there would be an additional charge. If we continue down, we can see that there are small pictures next to each section of the quote. These are an optional feature, designed to assist the client and make the final document stand out. We can switch these off by checking this box if we don't want to include them. We did enter the items that we would be using for the electrics and plumbing into our quote, and checked the PC sum box, rather than entering it as a lump PC sum. At the moment, the written quote contains only the financial detail of both of these PC sums but we can include further details if we wish. At the top, we have two checkboxes. If we want to include more detailed information for the electrics and plumbing, we can. We just check these boxes. Let's check the electrics. The rewrite quote button automatically comes up. Let's click yes. As I mentioned at the start of this movie, when the program sees that we've made changes that will affect the content of the written quote, it will ask us if we want to rewrite it. Okay, the quote is now rewritten and we now have the details of the electrical items that will be included in this quote. If we continue down to the decorating, we can see that there is a client-friendly explanation of what a mist coat is. We can also see that it states that external frames and external items are not included in the decorating. At the bottom, we can see the quotation price and any VAT that has been added. This price includes all of the markups that have been added by us to the direct costs, and the roundups to the PC sums that we've entered. To help prevent any misunderstandings, there is further default text that informs the client that this quotation is based on what has been stated above. And a bit further down, it states that we can't accept liability for any damage caused by suppliers' delivery vehicles or for compaction damage caused by plant. The client's responsibilities are also included here. We can edit or move any of this default text if we don't wish to include it or want to change the wording. We can opt to have the payment schedule at the bottom of the work schedule. Or, if we don't need to provide a payment schedule with the quote, we can switch this off. Just check this box, we get the rewrite quote button. If we rewrite the quote, it will be removed. At the very bottom of the quote, there are accept or decline options and a feedback form. 
OK, so we've seen what's automatically generated for us and the options that we can switch off or on. Let's take a look at how we can edit our quote. We may want to edit our quote here, as we go. To do this, we click the View Formula bar like this. We then click once on the text that we want to change and we can adjust it up here in the formula bar. It's important to remember that if we use this option, due to the way the program generates the quotation for us, if we choose or need to rewrite the quote for any reason, then due to the way the automated process works, the changes we have made using this method will be overwritten and the quotation will be regenerated based on the default criteria. The plus side to this is that if we delete something or change something in error, we can click the right quote button and it will revert back to its original settings. If we want to make adjustments that won't be removed by the right quote option, then we can use the built-in edit quote function and other options like clean up quote and find and replace. Or we can export the quotation to Microsoft Word. Exporting the quote to Word will mean that if we hit the rewrite quote button, then because the Word document is independent of the program, it will not be affected. We're going to take a look at all of these. We'll start with the built-in Edit Quote option. So we'll click the Edit Quote button located here at the top of the written quotation. We're taken to the Edit Quote page. The page is laid out in the same order as the written quotation we've looked at. We can access this page and make adjustments in any quotation that we produce but to save time, we may want to make adjustments in our master file. Each quote we produce is based on the settings in our master file, so if we get this set to our preferences in there, it will be set in that way each time we want to generate a new quote. We can always go back into our master file to adjust the settings at any time, and we can, if required, still edit the written quotation further on individual quotes that we produce. OK, so the first section that we may want to edit is the opening paragraph. To adjust any of this text, just click in the box. We can delete any text we don't want and replace it by typing in the new text that we require. As we go down, we will see that each pricing section has its own set of default text boxes. All of these can be adjusted. When we write our quote, the program will place this default text around the information and specific details such as dimensions, quantities and material items, and so on, that it's brought into the written quote from the pricing sheet. To help us to ensure that any adjustments we make read correctly when this happens, on this edit quote page we're provided with this blue text. It indicates what detail will be brought through from the pricing sheet as well as telling us whereabouts that detail will be placed. So if we look here at the ground floor, vegetation of soils subheading, we know that on the written quote this text from line 1 will be first, followed by a dimension from the pricing sheet, followed by the text in line 2. We'll just go back to the written quote to see this in action. So here is the text from line 1, here is the dimension from the pricing sheet, and here is the text from line 2. It's really simple. If we go back to the edit quote and continue scrolling down, we can see that it all works in this same way. Where applicable, the blue text will indicate where the information from the pricing sheet will be brought in. This is so we can ensure that any editing we do to the default text makes sense and reads correctly when the detail from the pricing sheet is brought in. As we continue down, we will see there is also red warning text. This is to draw our attention to the fact that the way we have priced the work will affect the way the text is brought into the written quote. So here in general, this red text tells us that if you've entered a PC sum for the kitchen section, the following two lines will replace line one above. This is really helpful as we can understand what the program is going to do, making editing the information much simpler. In the other PC sum section, we will notice these red triangles. If we hover over them, it lets us know that the description we have entered for any other PC sums will be brought into the written quotation. As we can see here, we also have the option to edit the text that's at the bottom of the written quote. OK, so we've now seen how we can edit the default text that surrounds the information that's brought in from the pricing sheet. There are two other options that we may find helpful, as they enable us to clean up and, if necessary, replace details that have come in from the actual pricing sheet. OK, as we've seen, the generation of the written quotation is an automated process, whereby the programme places specific information from the pricing sheet into the correct gap within the default text. 
As this is an automated computer process, we may find on occasions that whilst the actual information isn't incorrect or inaccurate, there may be certain grammar or spelling anomalies that we'd rather not have in the quotation. We have two tools to help us eliminate these if we wish. We'll start by looking at the Clean Up Quote option. We'll click the Clean Up Quote button. OK, this opens a form. In here, we can enter up to 20 items of text that we do not want to be included in our written quotation. Then, if we switch this option on, when the quote is written, these will not be added to the content. Let's do an example. As we've seen, the program pulls through certain details exactly as they appear in the pricing sheet. It may be that we don't think it is necessary or relevant for some of these details to be presented to the client. Here's a good example. In the cavity installation information for our walls, as we can see, the entire description of the material that we have selected has been brought in. What we can do is this. Let's take this part of the description that isn't really necessary and we'll add it to the clean up quote form. OK, now we will rewrite the quote. If we come across things like this, where perhaps the description of a material is more detailed than we want, if we add this information to the clean up quote form in our master file, we can be confident that when we produce further quotes, it won't be brought in. OK, see? The text that we said we wanted to be cleaned up has been. As mentioned, we can add up to 20 text items to the clean up form. If I just open it again, we can click this blue info icon for more information. The clean up option is quite a complex process. When it's switched on, all of the text will be scanned to ensure the correct items are removed. So it does extend the amount of time it takes the program to write the quote. So if it's not something we want to use, we do have the option to switch it off like this. And if we do want to use it, we can, if we prefer, just turn it on when we've made any other adjustments that might be required. OK, we'll now take a look at the Find and Replace option. We'll click this button. Again, we're provided with a form that contains yellow boxes. Some of these may be pre-filled for us. This form enables us to enter any text that is not being written in the way that we want. For example, it may be that the salutation Mr comes through and does not start with a capital letter. Or maybe the DPM may come through as lowercase. What we do with this form is enter the text that is not coming through in the way that we want, making sure we enter it in the incorrect format. So here we can see that we are telling the program to locate any text that has DPM in lowercase. When it finds it, we're asking the program to replace it with DPM in uppercase. We can enter in up to 10 different pieces of text that we want to replace. Like the cleanup form, we can click this blue info icon for further help on using this option. Like the cleanup option, the find and replace is quite a complex process. When it's switched on, all of the text will be scanned to ensure the items in the form are not only found, but also replaced so it does extend the amount of time it takes the program to write the quote. If it's not something we want to use, we do have the option to switch it off like this. And if we do want to use it, we can, if we prefer, just turn it on when we have made any other adjustments that might be required. If we want, we can add our own logo onto the written quote. Again, this is something that is best done and saved in our master file. That way we don't have to do it each time we produce a quote. Let's take a look at how this works. It's important to note that the logo does need to be in an image file format, so a JPEG or a PNG. And we will need to know whereabouts on our computer it's saved. We'll click Insert Logo. This will open a window. What we need to do is use this window to navigate to the place on our machine where our logo image is. When we have got to the location, we double click on the image file. This will now bring it into the body of our written quote. We can change the size of the image like this, we can also move it into the position that we want it to be in. When we've got the content of our written quote exactly as we want it, we can print it. Before printing, we may want to look at the page breaks. We'll click the button. OK, so as each quote we produce is going to be different in content, and therefore length, for presentation purposes, we might want to adjust where the page breaks are. So here, for example, it may look better if this is on the same page as the corresponding information. So we can move this blue line to adjust where the page break is. To go back to the written quote, click the Set to Normal View button. We'll go back to the quote. We hit Print. This will open the Print dialog box. This will be based on the settings that are on your own machine. Our program does not have any control over these. So if, for example, the quote isn't printing, it is worth checking that the correct printer has been selected in this drop-down menu. 
and that the actual printer you are trying to use is switched on and in working order. OK, so we have seen how we can edit, adjust and tweak the quotation from right here in the programme. There are lots of options that we can use, but we may still prefer to export the quotation to Microsoft Word before we print it, due to the fact that we have many more formatting options. It's important to note that if we do export this written quote to Microsoft Word, only the text will export. The images won't. OK, to do this we do need to have Microsoft Word installed on the machine we're using. We then just click this button. We get a message saying it has successfully opened and is down here on our taskbar. We can see the Word icon. If we click this, it will bring the document up. By default, this is automatically saved in our client's folder when it's first generated. It's saved as a Word doc under the client's name. But if we make any changes or adjustments that we wish to keep, we will need to hit the Save button again. As we scroll down, we can see that all of the text from our written quote has been brought into here for us. But we now have all the formatting options that Word can provide. For example, if we want to change the font, text size, paragraph layout and so on, we can. Let's close this and go back to our quotation. OK, so as we can see, all the hard work is done for us when we generate a written quotation. But we are able to edit the details and use the built-in options to ensure our quote is set to our exact preferences. And if we set it up to our preferred way in our master file, we won't need to do it each time we produce a quote. If we need any further assistance, we can click the Help button here. This will open the help form. If we want to email our quotation to our client, then we do need to use the Export to Word function here and use the Save and Send function that is within Microsoft Word. Full information on how to do this can be found by clicking this blue info icon.